Bug hunting is simpler than you think. A lot of people overcomplicate it, but the truth is, finding vulnerabilities doesn't have to be rocket science. In this video, I'll show you my approach to quickly identifying security flaws, the tools to make it easier, and some key techniques to help you land real bugs. And here is the best part. Sometimes, all you need is a Chrome browser. But before we start, a quick reminder. Always follow safe harbor policies, respect program rules, and be a responsible hacker. Breaking the rules can get you in legal trouble, so just make sure you're testing ethically and with permission. Now, let's get started with ethical hacking. So let's together solve a quick mystery lab which will 100% improve your recon skills and it will help you become a top-notch hacker. I will also show you a technique which I use and I found vulnerabilities using this technique for a lot of websites. So without further ado, let me just show you. I'm going to use only solved labs for this because this way you're actually using the labs which you have solved or aka the lessons which you have learned. I will select the partitioner as well as category any so everyone can follow along. Without further ado, let's click this challenge me button and let's start the challenge. So the challenge has started. So first things first, once you land on a website, don't immediately just go hack. That's the mistake you're going to make. And that is the number one mistake you guys, especially as a beginners, make. Now, we actually need to take notes here. So maybe grab a piece of paper or you even use notepad on your Windows or whatever operating system you use. I use Windows. I'm not really comfortable with using Kali Linux or Ubuntu or whatever because I'm just comfortable using Windows and I have all the tools necessary to hunt for vulnerabilities. Now, first things first, let's take a note of all of the functionalities on this website. Firstly, we have the search functionality. We also have a lot of posts which we can visit and each post has a unique ID. On top of that, if you scroll down, you can see all of the comments that have been made on this post, as well as your own comment, which can be posted. We have the comment field, name field, email field, and as well as the website. So we need to take a mental note of this or just write it down on a notepad. Let's go back. And now there is pretty much anything like, right, it's all there. Maybe we can search something up here on this search. So let's just search something and let's click search and let's just see what happens. Uh, search results for this, nothing special. Okay, what I like to do now is we obviously know that there could be XSS or IDOR or even SQL injection because if we go back to our blog, this is what happens once we visit a post. So maybe if we could just add this and then hit enter, we could have SQL injection, but obviously that won't work. We can also maybe have command injections, but that's just not for another story. Now, IDOR could be possible. For example, we can manipulate here to view a private post. So maybe just go through them and see if that's the vulnerability, but that just doesn't seem likely, but it could be. So that's another idea. And this is the way you get ideas. So first things first, you have to analyze a website, then you go about exploiting it. So what could go wrong here? This is all of the things that could go wrong. So we know that there is no SQLI. There might be uh, IDOR. But let's just go back, right? Let's go search something up again. And let's see if there is maybe XSS here, because there could be. So now, what I like to do is I like to open Chrome Developer Tools because it's just amazing and it serves a good purpose. So let's just scroll over here and just see what's happening. Uh, there is here, you searched for this, but there is a problem. Uh, I already know why there could be an XSS, because as you can see, these little guys here, I'm going to go over to the console to explain to you. When you declare a variable, for example, test equals uh, something and hit enter, you can see how it looks like. But if I was to say test equals something like this, something, it would do the exact same thing. But there's a neat thing you can use here. For example, this is what we can use. So we can now say one plus one and we now have something too. So <laughs> my idea, right, is what if I just say alert here and hit enter and obviously that works and <laughs> we solve the challenge. And this is how you should be hacking because first things first, take a mental note or even write it down on a piece of paper everything that could go wrong on the website that is the number of one advice which i can give you and there's that's something that i've utilized on a lot of targets so just that then go over here to sources for example if you're hunting for xss even if it's not xss even if it's something else 
I would like really like to have this open because you can also here see the, the fetch and you can also see every single request that's being made. So that's another good thing. We can even test for CSRF here. So I like to go here for sources and then view the source code of this website. And then here you can see how it looks like. And this is something that you can learn on Portswigger or any other website. So this is the way that you need to do. This is the only thing that's stopping you from finding vulnerabilities. And before you leave, let's solve another quick challenge. And this time we're using something else. So basically I've selected here the not only solved labs, I've deselected that and now I'm just working on labs, which I've never seen in my life, just to show you what you can do. Let's again start assessing this website. So there's products, we can view details again uh it's taking a while to open them so that's interesting it's not my wi-fi uh and we also have now products we have everything we also have my account so that means we can log in cool uh apart from that there is no search functionality and there's just products so we have logging in and once we log in we also have uh email updation we also have here our username a lot of stuff uh let's go back to home we now have a mental note of everything that could go wrong on this website. First things first, there might be an SQL injection or an IDOR on only these things here. So just keep that in mind. When logging in, there could be an SQL injection or some type of other vulnerability, which we need to research. And third and final page like this one, there could be a CSRF here. There could be a clickjacking or something. So a lot of different vulnerabilities. Let's go ch check for click jacking. So let's just open up the network and let's hit refresh and select doc. And this uh, website has extreme options header set to same origin. So there is no click, click jacking. Let's scroll down. Uh, we can see that the cookie looks <laughs> a little interesting. Believe it or not, this is base 64. And if you are not sure what type of encoding it is in the session or in the cookies, there is online analyzers, which will analyze the session and tell you what type of uh, encoding or encryption algorithm it has been used. So let's decode this. I'm going to use the base64 or decode.org website. Let's paste this and let's add these two because believe it or not, this is URL encoded equal signs and let's hit the code. All right, we already have interesting stuff. This is an object in PHP, but it has been encoded as base64 and it is used as authentication. All right, so let's reveal the objective. We have to delete user Carlos. So that means we need to uh, log in as administrator. So let's again copy this up right here and let's go over here to now. Uh, I'm sorry, let's go over to encode. Let's paste this in and let's try to change the username. So instead of winner, let's go with administrator. And if you have this, this means it's string and this tells PHP the length of administrator. I'm not quite sure. Let me just count this quickly. Turns out it's 13. Let's put 13 here. Then we have all of this stuff. I don't think we have this access token, which is a string, but this looks kind of interesting. I know a PHP vulnerability, which we could exploit if this doesn't work. So let's encode this now. And let's see how it looks like. So let's copy this up. Let's go back to console and let's just say document cookie equals session equals this done. And let's just add path equals this. So it affects every single page on this website. Let's refresh the page and OK, it didn't work. We are still wiener, but did it actually use our session? It actually didn't. That's interesting. So maybe if I clear out the cookies first, so yeah, you're currently seeing how actual research looks like. So let's do this and let's hit reload. Ah, would you look at that? We have PHP fatal error. Hmm. We have access tokens. So the access token is not valid. There is an interesting vulnerability in PHP, which I'm not sure if you knew about, but let me just show it to you quickly. See this? You can replace this essentially with a zero. And since this is no longer a string, it's an integer. We have to also remove that. And I think here this and you just basically encode this <laughs> and, and you copy this and you go back and you clear out the cookies again. So let's try this. No, shh. so let's try to clear out the cookies, clear them out. 
uh, do select the session and paste this instead. Hit enter. Reload. Uh, we are now... Uh, admin panel? Oh, we did it. <laughs> Yay. And now let's delete the Carlos. And would you look at that? We solved the lab. Now, I already knew about this vulnerability. But what you can do essentially is just basically straight up Google PHP vulnerabilities and just go through them. You can even use ChatGPT. And if you want me to use ChatGPT to try and hack a website, then leave a like on this video. Make sure to subscribe to see more cybersecurity content. And as always, stay safe, stay responsible, of course, and continue hacking.